Hello, friends, and welcome to another single serving tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. I am Aubrey, and today we are going to be playing some Kids on Brooms by Jonathan Gilmore, Doug Lewandowski, and Spencer Stark. Uh, we'll roll on into things in just a moment, but first, let me introduce my cast. Uh, starting, we will start with uh, Jess. Tell everybody uh, just uh, who, who you are and who you're playing. Uh, my name is Jazz. I use she, they pronouns, and I'm playing Caster Saros. He is, um, he has he, him pronouns. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, we'll move over to Alyssa. Hello, hello. My name is Alyssa. I use they, them pronouns, and I am playing Rima Thompson, who goes by Tom and uses they, he, she pronouns. Awesome. Uh, and then we'll move over to Kai. Hi everybody, I'm Kai. I use he, they, and she pronouns. I will be playing Renee Asher Gerard Laval, who uses he, they pronouns. Uh, and uh, Jay. Hi everybody, my name is Jay or Nala. I use they, them pronouns, and today I am playing Fado Jin, who uses he, they, and she pronouns. Okay, um, so you can find the links to everyone's assorted social medias um, in chat by sending uh, exclamation point cast. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, you can also use exclamation point scenario if you want to get your hands on a copy of Kids on Brooms yourself. Uh, the cast and I have discussed our lines and veils in advance via a session zero and have agreed to a code of conduct to ensure a safe and respectful environment, but we want you to be safe as well. Uh, use exclamation point safety to see any of the content warnings for this episode. Uh, with all of that said, are we ready to roll on into things? Yeah. How about fly on brooms? I mean, that's oh, it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. The dark light of the eternal eclipse hangs over the city of Malakad. It has been almost 100 years since the tyrant moon appeared and thrust the world of Nox light into an eternal state of solar eclipse. But that itself is a story for another day. We pan over the city to a district overflowing with light. The Tower of Ravenswood Academy stand tall. Looking out over the city, gargoyles guard the institution, of this institution of learning. A flock of corpse moths are disturbed when the bell tower starts to toll. One, two, three times, signaling the start of classes for the day. As we move down to street level, we see the hustle and bustle on campus. People trying to make sure they're not late for whatever class they start their day with. Teachers move from place to place, sometimes stopping to talk to students or other faculty. We move with the crowd, heading through the massive wooden doors of the entryway, domed ceilings high above the crowd. You can hear the telltale sound of several birds that have decided to nest there. A couple of corvids living in the academy seems fitting, just don't tell the caretaker. Moving up the massive flight of stairs, we come to the first class of the day, alchemy, a scholarly art that has yet to still be fully understood. Each of our students sits at a table with their materials in front of them. Uh, now I'm gonna let you uh, describe your characters a little bit. And also the big question is, are you a person who sits in the front of the class or are you a person who sits in the back of the class? Cause that seems rather telling. Ara, where do you think we're seated? I think Faro usually sits in the front. I think, um, like front and center. Um, however, as of recently, uh, I think, I think, uh, he started taking a seat like a row or two back off to the side, all the way off to the side. Um, I think we see Fado Jin, who stands, I believe, five foot eight. And um, he 
has very broad shoulders, very stocky, kind of heavy set, built like a fridge is how I described uh, my body type. Um, Mato has um, curly black hair that's cut into a shag um, and uh, a small part of their eyebrow on this side is completely white. Not bleach, so it's just white. Um, Fado's eyes are dark, dark brown, um, and her skin is a medium brown, kind of olive, cooler undertones, um, and I think the most magical thing about Fado's appearance is his freckles, which um, are usually like normal freckles on, on their face, but when using magic or uh, occasionally they'll glow golden. Um, Fado sits uh, with, you know, the notebook for the class open. They're, they keep their desk area very, very neat. They've got their one um, fountain pen or whatever <laughs> we're using to take notes. Um, and I think in, in their eyes, we just see a little bit of forlorn sadness. I think much quieter than maybe even a couple weeks ago, unless Faro made it very clear that we were not sitting together today. Next to her is Renee, who is petite and slight and very, very almost ghostly pale skin. Um, he has dark curls in his hair and a distinct white streak that just appeared very recently. Um, unlike Faro, um, Renee is very attentive, uh, eager, listening, and bright-eyed, which is funny because um, his eyes are almost entirely black, except for two, like, ice blue irises that look very intently as he smiles with a mouth full of slightly sharper than normal teeth. Um, he does seem to have some sort of uh, non-human uh, elements to him with small horns and a just poking out of the top of his very, very fine, very tailored trousers, a black tail with a little bit of fur at the end, <laughs> swishing behind his chair as he very diligently takes notes. And uh, we kind of pan down his arm and you see a very delicate hand writing with the most beautiful hand writing with a very, very, very fine pen. And on his pinky, he wears a gold large signet ring um, and he just looks kind of steals a glance next to him at Faro I think over the past few weeks since well you know Faro usually would drag you to the front of the room and we'd sit down together and I think ever since the incident Faro has just walked in first and sat down. And I think every day you sit next to me. But there's no longer that, like, extended invite of, like, let's sit together. Or come sit next to me. <laughs> and I think that the sadness of that is starting to sink in. And Renee has started putting their bag on the side between him and Faro. In stark contrast to the sad boy hours happening at the front of the room, <laughs> there is Tom in the back row, farthest seat from the door they can get a good visibility of everyone else in class. They're about average height, slim, almost scrawny, but the way that they've spread out their body in the chair makes them take up far more space than their physique requires. 
They're wearing a black school vest cut low and open slightly, showing off the still shiny horizontal scars below their pectorals. And there's a black blazer thrown over one of their shoulders. His hair is this like artfully disheveled mass of blue curls, sharp elven ears sort of barely peeking through them. They have light brown skin and large round glasses that barely obscure their sort of surprisingly flat gray eyes and the crooked, several crooked pence in their nose, which has clearly been broken and poorly set more than once. Uh, He is currently tapping a pen against his lip ring, occasionally using it to bait the sort of bright white pipe fox that's wiggling about the workstation. A pipe fox is basically a... (laughs) A pipe fox is basically a... Looks sort of like a stoat, but without legs and with a fox tail. So just like a wiggly little worm on a string with a fox face. <laughs> uh, and in stark tra- contrast to, I guess there's a there's a bit of an in-between, which is fitting because he is sitting in the exact middle of the room. We have Castor, who is a, uh, a wiry young black man with medium brown skin and uh, disheveled curls uh, with uh, an undercut. It's, it's, it's silvery white and his eyes are gold, um, but that's the only indicator that his blood might not be entirely human. He is lounging a bit uh, with one arm over the back of his chair, playing with his pen as he stares with an absent smirk up at the front of the room. He has his notebook open, but he's taken no notes. Uh, Instead, he looks like he's calculating um, the funniest possible joke he can make in this situation. At his feet is his familiar, which is a fennec fox uh, with silvery brown fur and very, very large ears. She is simply sleeping supposedly she looks like she's sleeping but we all know that with those large large ears of hers she is listening for any possible secrets that one can uh, capitalize on exactly um well renee and faro did you bring your familiars to class with you i think i left conrad back in my room i think i left my cat in my room as well I just need naps. It's fine. Can't let the familiar see you be sad. Also, I think I gave Conrad a job. What kind of animal is Conrad? Conrad is a stoat. Yeah. What is and that? It's like a they're they're related to um like ferrets and those kinds of like mongoose like creatures. Um, but they are they have a unique thing that part of the thing that endures them to me forever. Stoats, uh, depending on the time of year, their coats are completely different colors. Um, so depending on, I guess, because the seasons here are probably extremely strange. Uh, so depending on the time of year, if it is winter, stoats are white, and during the summer, they are brown. Yeah, I mean, and year round, they are cute. Extremely cute. <laughs> Correct. I mean, <laughs> this world is, albeit a fantasy one that's different, still has the same four seasons. You know, so they're just called different things. Uh, there's, there's no reason for um, the, the the narrative to 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 know this. Uh, my cat is not relevant yet, but I I think it is prudent to tell everybody up front that my cat's name is Goose, and uh, <laughs> and Perfect. he is a long furred white cat, <laughs> long hair white white cat, <laughs> incredibly adorable. Uh, and as you're all sitting in, figuring out what day is going to be, uh, you hear the tap, tap, tap of a cane as uh, the teacher comes in from the back. You all watch as this very large man, this tiefling with grayish skin and long hair that has gone white from age. You see 
where his horns would normally go and curl back like a ram's would. They, at some point in his past, were damaged and have grown back at uneven lengths. You see Professor Talus as he does his normal walk through the room up to the front, turns around and his his wand is partially a cane as well. It is, it's got a, a beautifully carved head and, you know, he just sets it on the his desk before he turns around to look at all of you and just goes, well, it's good to see that you're all here today, I believe. Mm, a few empty seats, but... I think that's normal. Well, let's get into things. It is, if everyone had done their readings, they will, you will all know that we are studying ghouls and ghoul fever today. So, would somebody like to tell me exactly how one might make an antitoxin for ghoul fever? And we'll start off with that. And we'll also start off with the first roll of the game. Is this going to be a brains roll? Uh, this is going to be a brains roll. It's, you know, we're. it's going to be a lower one because you should have done the reading. Um, so we're going to put the, uh, the, like the DC, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, at a nine. That's the has... token for your boy. Uh, I rolled a nine, but I think that the first thing Caster does is go, do we ask them nicely? Uh, yes. If we could ask a ghoul nicely, uh, we would probably would not have as many problems with them. But I'll give you credit for the the joke. Renee, who's usually one of the first people to raise his hand, slumps deeper into his chair. I got a four. And <laughs> oh, he definitely just didn't do the reading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Vado has done the reading. Um, I got an 18. Um, and... <laughs> Unlike usual, um, Faro doesn't um, doesn't raise doesn't raise his hand. Um, although we've been in class for a while, Caster, um, Tom, and Renee, and you, you would know that Faro most likely knows this answer. This alchemy is or was <laughs> Faro's best class. I was usually more engaged and. Um, I'm just sitting there, like, I got my note, no, notebook open, and I'm just sitting there. I will um, tap my pencil. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, Tom did part of the reading, but was more interested in studying the sort of ghouls and incurring the fear rather than coming up with the antidote. So does not know the answer. Um, I think that Caster will um, kind of tap his pen a bit on the table, staring directly at Faro, like, are you gonna answer? Um, And when he doesn't, uh, he just kind of goes, Monk should. Dust of corpse moth, and uh, I imagine some ghoul spit and um, grave dirt. That's right, yes? Exactly right. Uh, young Master Saros. At least someone did their reading t- last night. Uh, and and uh, Osmop gives you all gives you a little bit of a smile, you know, uh, like some tieflings. He also has a. It's 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 interesting when uh, someone with fangs is smiling because it's like, is it, is it you know, are they happy or are they? Uh, threatening you yeah it's is it like is it threatening are they happy who knows uh but you know you, 
this has happened before. So, you know, this is not the first time. Uh, good, good. Someone did the reading. And quite often, ghoul fever itself is incurred from a bite from a ghoul. Uh, there are stages to it. It may initially present as normally just a normal infection. Just raise in body temperature, sweating. And is when it gets to later stages that one has to worry. The antitoxin itself should be administered as quickly as possible to stave off any any further going down the that road. And for classes on Mint today, we are going to be making of everyone is going to be making a vial of antitoxin because you have all heard about some of the troubles in the city. Uh, ghouls are coming out of the Hollow Haunt, a district that fell into a chasm about 30 years ago, if I'm remembering correctly. And the coin guard and the hunters are doing their best to keep them back. But they need all the help we can. they can get. So if we can give them some antitoxin, that will help them. Uh, so, you know, work together, make at least one dose per person, and turn them in by the end of class. And how are we testing these antitoxins before we pass them off for use, or...? I, I'll be able to tell if they, are, if they were made properly or not. I've been studying this for long enough. And is this a paid endeavor for us? Do you get to keep we... them afterwards? It just for the greater good. If you get paid in credit, you know, grades. You're having us buy grades from you, Professor. Well, Actually paying for it, technically. Your payment for a good grade is a vial of antitoxin. seems reasonable. I think Fado um, flips back in their notebook to the notes that he took last night, and Renee, who's sitting next to me, can see that I took notes and that I had the recipe written down in my neat print. My handwriting is not as nice as Renee's, but it is neat enough. Um, and I just reached into my bag um, and I start pulling out the ingredients mm -hmm. silently, and yeah. I'm I got like my little uh, uh oh what are they called the thing that you grind stuff with um mortar mortar mortar, mortar. mortar. Yeah. mortar. mortar. I, yeah that word that I can't say um I pull that out and I just start getting to work um mm -hmm. I empty a little uh a little uh, container of these uh, moths into the mortar and I just start grinding them. Yeah, yeah. the um, the corpse moths themselves, this is like dust from the wing of the corpse moth. The, there is a, also, you all know that there is a storeroom that is connected to the alchemy room that should have everything if you don't already have it. Uh, it is kept well stocked. I think despite that well stocked room right there, um, Without really looking at her, Renee slides a note between them. Doesn't turn his head, doesn't actually look at them, just slides the note. Because uh, usually Renee is the first one to have all of the supplies. This is like something that he prides himself in. He's very prepared for class all of the time. And he goes into his bag um, and pulls out a small set of vials that would normally be full of the supplies for whatever given uh, project for this course. And he pulls it out and it has yesterday's supplies from a different project. And the note just asks, can I borrow some of that? Uh, Fado takes a note and just like, opens it, reads it, folds the note back up, places it in front of me, and I 
after taking out what I need, just slide slide everything over to you. But I don't really say anything, and I don't acknowledge you. I go over to the cabinet. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Being gay, apparently. And yeah, I don't think that this is subtle behavior. They're like right in the front. Yeah, <laughs> the thing, yeah that's, it's the thing is that like, I'm, Caster has just been staring directly at the back of your heads. Like what's going on with them? That lover's quarrel perhaps. Yeah. Tom will join you at the cabinet and sort of sling an arm around your shoulders. Uh, I noticed you answering the question, so I am claiming you as a lab partner here. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, hello. What can I do for you? Work with me on this. Oh, do you want me? Who else would I want? Um, you know, there are a lot of things I could say to that, but for now, we're just going to uh, get the ingredients and, um, yeah... Tom sort of smiles at you slowly and lets you pick everything up. Are you going to do anything? Do you want me to do the entire thing? Oh, if you're offering, that would be wonderful. I wasn't offering. I was clarifying. I mean, you seem like the type of person who likes to tell people what to do. I'm at your service. Are you? Well, I hand you the mortar and, um, and the, uh, I guess the dust of, or I, I guess the wings of the of the corpse moth, and I'm just I'm like point, and then I start gathering the rest of the ingredients. Sort of salutes and goes off to do it. Yes. Well. Um... Well, uh, we'll do some magic now, uh, sort of. Now is a great time for you to tell me exactly, like, how you do this. Are you being a little bit slapdash and just hoping it goes together, using it? What skill do you want to use to brew this potion? I'm going to allow you to sell me on something. Oh, boy. I would like to use my brains, please. <laughs> exactly. That, that makes yeah. total sense. You do not need to sell me on that. You can use brains, or you, if you were like, well, I'm really good at this one skill. Uh, this is how I use it to brew the potion. Um, and it will also be the same as uh, it'll be. We'll go We'll go with a seven for, because this is still pretty, pretty basic. Uh, you just got to let me know what skill you want to use to brew this potion. Quick question. For the... <laughs> Like the pluses that we get to stuff, does this count as stat or does this count as magic? This counts as magic. It's magic. <gasps> and so you also if get I to roll your, a... you roll your magic die with magic it. die. That's nice. Yay! What's the magic die? <laughs> Is a D four. Okay, cool. Um, and that just gets added to the total. Yes. Plus the plus that we have, and then mm. I just took one of my strengths is that I'm very good at alchemy. Yes. So do I add that as well? Does yes. this all stack? It stacks. <laughs> okay. Stats on, oh, stats, yeah. on stats. stats on stats. Stats on stats. Renee is big brain, not big talky. So it's just going to be like, okay, I know how to assemble a potion. I'm not new. And just going to use that big old brain. Yeah. Um, here's the thing is that caster is quite clever i don't know if he knows the finer um points of cooking or alchemy <laughs> potion mm. making so i think instead um i will use charm to tell tom what to do <laughs> i like that <laughs> and yes. tom in turn turns to the sort of group of students behind us every few seconds asking for further sort of clarification or just like oh can you just help me with this part um i'm not quite sure i understand what wow you're saying. and i would also like <laughs> to use charm we got the kings of delegation in the back here <laughs> yeah. icon wow. icon <laughs> try not to take it personally it's fine <laughs> I got an eight. An eight? 
I got a seven. You could spend that adversity token and get an eight. Is that what the DC was? Eight? Uh, yeah. The for... DC was seven, wasn't it? DC was seven? The, yes, yeah. DC was seven. Yeah, it was seven. Oh, perfect. We have a transcript. I can scroll back up and see what you said. <laughs> Fair. Um, I got a big brain uh, 15, so we're doing good. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. And I got a twenty-one. Yeah, no, like uh, Renee and Faro, you, this is this is like a pretty basic, you know, just like antitoxin itself. It's not incredibly hard to make. You both uh, do it with a palm. Like you have the temperatures and everything, and all of the measurements are perfect. Like down to like just. The you know, it is exactly how it needs to be. And yeah, you're both getting good grades. Uh, I think and... it's like, it's so quiet though. Usually there's like some joy in it between us as we sit and work next to each other. Um, Renee just works very quietly and very diligently. Yeah, and you're both very uh, exact with everything. and You know, saying no more than you need to, I guess. Yeah. I think once Faro is done i take the completed antitoxin and i stand up from my chair mm -hmm. and i walk behind renee and just out to the aisle walk straight down to professor talus's desk I place it on the desk i turn around and i walk back to my seat the professor gives you a nod and just being like exceptional work I think Faro pauses for a second as if considering what to say and then they just incline their head very politely and they say thank you and then I turn around and walk yeah. back to my seat and I sit down I'll give you a little nod as well um, I think that Caster, uh, meanwhile, the measurements are not, are not exact because he's very much like, you measure that shit with your heart. So very word of, not word of mouth, but like, mm. like kind of like telling you just like, just like a little bit, like, no, just like a little bit more. Yes. Perfect. Okay. I think that as I'm sort of finishing up with the measurements in the potion, we see Faro go up to the front of the class and receive uh, his praise for the potion. And I lean over to Castor and whisper, they finished that so fast. Do you think that the ice speed, icy disposition is part of the spell? You could try it, don't you think? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think as you guys are laughing, um, a, a measured amount of time after uh, Faro sits down again, Renee just kind of looks over at him again and then gets up and very quietly walks down towards the professor's desk. But here's all the laughing and kind of just looks to see what's going on there with these two. Oh, you um, you should probably stir that a little more. Thank you for your timely advice. You should stir that a little more. <laughs> oh, is there a certain speed here? Why don't you show me? Oh, all right. And uh, Renee stops walking down to the professor's desk and and like kind of scoots in and, and it's like okay you have to actually um it's five times pause five times pause i learned that from uh uh you know no i, d I don't i don't know school <laughs> um my roommate's better about it th than i am um ah your roommate roommate yeah, the roommates. Yes, we're roommates. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> it goes back to stirring really quickly. <laughs> um, I, I I feel like this is, might be a bit forward, so you can say no if you don't want it. Are you okay? You two used to be incredibly close. It feels um, the tension is thick enough to cut with, cut through. We're just working through some things. Are you? Because you're not really talking to each other. Am I right? Communication is the basis of all relationships. That is not the basis of many of mine. Um, uh, maybe that's your problem. I... Uh, we'll, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. It's going to be all right. Are you upset because you both sort of did a makeover at the same time and... N- no. Um, you know, you try things um, and they don't always work out. Um, I should... Um, I should go turn this in. Thanks for your help. Five times pause. Five times Five pause. Five times pause. Mm. And Renee very awkwardly just kind of like dips out of the conversation. <laughs> it was awkward. <laughs> that felt awkward. Heartbreak, do you think? They tried dating and... That was what... That's, it's got to be it, right? That Broke up you know, They really thought that, well... It happens sometimes. Maybe they just weren't as compatible as they thought they were. Ugh, messy. It is messy, especially if they continue to be roommates. Roommates still? Yeah. I feel for them, really. I do. Well, they seemed quite close before. I'm sure they'll be able to work it out. Yeah, they'll work it out. It's just awkward now. Extremely. So I really don't want to be the one to answer questions in class. But you do it so well. Thank you. So, You're flatter, aren't you? I just smile. <laughs> Is it flattery if it's true? I'll tell you what it is. Very effective on me. (laughs) Good to know. I suppose we finish up our potions, potions then, um, and bring them down to the professor with a flourish. I'm like. Professor takes a look at them, you know, the consistency and the color of them and just goes, Yes, that is acceptable. So, like, do we get to keep these? Never answer my question. No, these will be, once I make sure that they're all good, these will be heading off to help people who need them. For Nana. I'll drop something. Hold on. (laughs) What is this? It's an empty cup. It's fine worry about it my room's not messy i think in the meantime while uh because Fado finished pretty easy uh pretty early um i think he sat quietly for you know some time um was probably looking through their notes um and then as as the rest of the class begins getting up and turning theirs in uh Faro seems to remember something and they reach into her school bag and pulls out um, like two pieces of parchment that are held together um, handwriting front back front back um, and and just you know arranges them on the desk walks up back to the professor and places this additional research report that Fado has completed um, for the professor um, on his desk and uh, instead of walking away this time Fado stands there just folding folding his hands just in front of him waiting for Talus to look at it 
as you, as you do that, yeah, yeah. He has been making notes in his journals as he watches everyone bring up, uh, you know, grading, uh, making notes about grades and things like that. Um, so you bring up this, uh, you know, he like looks down his glasses at you and, and he reaches over and will pick it up and start flipping through it. Uh, it's just, uh, is the reports on anything in particular? Um, I think, uh, if this is okay with you, I think, uh, because, um, Talus is, is my mentor, mm -hmm. I think he's been giving me additional assignments, also given that, like, alchemy is my specialty, and is something that I'm very interested in. Um, I think this research report was about some kind of new, a, a new alternative, um, or like a spin on the typical like healing potion mm -hmm. um, that exists. And uh, I think Faro was completing some kind of uh, research about um, alternative ingredients or something. And I wrote up this whole report on it um, because, well, because Professor Talos asked me to. Yeah. Uh, he is looking over it, sort of, uh, as, uh, yeah, a bit of, uh, you notice that, uh, he, he does kind of chew on his lips slightly as he thinks all oh, quite often, which is dangerous when you have fangs. Uh, but it's a habit that he's never seemed to have broken. Uh. I'm like a skin. <laughs> yeah, he's done that many times. You're good. Um, and he looks up at you and just goes... This, this, I will I'll have to take a deep dive into this. And, but your logic seems sound so far. Uh, how have you been doing? I've been all right. I've been better. It, yes, yes, yes. Um, it's, uh, you know, it looks down uh, at the paper and kind of worries one of the corners slightly and. Just goes, I will uh, take a look and let you know. I'll have it graded by the, the end of the day. I've got a couple of free periods, so I can get that done. Uh, if you want to drop by later, I can. we can discuss it if you'd like. Okay. I'll be there. And Faro, again, like, does a polite nod. And I walk back to my desk again. <laughs> mm -hmm. This time when you come back, there is another note. This one's not even folded. It's just sitting on top of all of your stuff that just says, how did it go? Um, I think in the first... The first... Uh, outwardly friendly sign. Faro turns to his right to look at you, and there's the smallest smile on their face, and they just give you a nod, and then just as quickly as it came, turns back and faces front. There's almost the ghost of, the, of a smile at the corner of Renee's lips as they just kind of nod back and uh, go back to thumbing through a book that they were reading. Folding paper airplanes. <laughs> I'm done, so I'm bored. <laughs> How uh, good are your paper airplanes? You know, like the, made, they are intricate and they're like, like really there's good. like different okay. ones. They're like, you know, like the long mm -hmm. ones, but also like the magical little, like, ones. Trick ones yeah. and then there's magical ones. Yeah. There's, I, I've made, I've made, they're not just planes too. Like I've made birds and I've made like, I don't know, a deer. Yeah. I mean, you know, the I've... logical levels of origami. You have paper plane, you have bird, <laughs> you have deer. Of course. <laughs> the three things you learn. The, the first yeah. three things you learn. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You skipped the cootie catcher phase, you know? <laughs> A knowing caster, yes, actually. See, they don't fly, so he can't uh, do true. that. True, so true. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. uh, but we all know deers do. 
Of fly. course. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, I can make them fly. They flap their horns, right? That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cursed. That is so cursed. I hate that so much. <laughs> Well, okay, bit over. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, last comes to an end. <laughs> Another one for the blue roll. Uh, class comes to an end uh, as you all pack up um, and start to head to your next class of the day. Uh, outside of the classroom, there is a uh, there's someone waiting for one of you. Um, there is a small sort of mousy looking girl with messy dark hair and her name is Juniper, and she is friends with one of you, or all of you, in some way or form. You're, you're aware of who she is. She's one of the, the, it's, she's, if this were a world that had things like Valid Victorian or something like that, she would probably be in the running for that. She's a girl who always has her nose in the book, um, you know, is, it's always like something to learn, you know, Find, like whatever books, you know, stack of them all the time. And she's she's looking for one of you uh, and she sort of has a a torn expression on her face. She's a little bit jumpy today. I think Renee and Juniper get on shockingly well. Renee does not have a lot of very close friends, but um, I think he is quite enamored with her work ethic and they share um I think they might have become friends because they both tried to check out the same book from the library. Uh-huh. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> Meet cute. Yep. And Juniper would have would have let you check it out because she's she's just that nice. I can see it happening because I also feel like Fado mm-hmm. and Juniper would get along really well as well. Um and uh I can see how it happened that both Renee and Juniper wanted to check out this book, but the book was out. Someone else had it. That someone else was me. And you both were <laughs> waiting for me to turn it back in so that you could borrow it. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, uh, she is just like clutching a book to her chest and she, she comes up to you, um, Renee, first. And it's probably because I feel like you leave the room first running practically yes like, like, oh, oh, oh hi hi um uh, uh, yes 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 um you're right it's been it's been a weird couple of days um yes i'm sorry about that i meant to get back to you uh, no 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 it's fine it's fine um i mean i've been busy can can I, I have to. I have to go. Um, I have. I have magical creatures soon. Um, can you? Can you meet me tonight at the library? In the library? Um, I. Sh- I am going to be busy the rest of the day. I've got the papers to finish. Uh, but I found something I really, really want to show you. Oh. I, yes. I, it's. It's. I, I was just digging and I found it. And it's. It's, it's something. I, I'm still kind of figuring out what it is, but I, I. I think you might be able to help me with that. Do. Do you need lots of help? Um, if you, if you want to bring friends, that's that's good. I mean, I it's in something that I don't understand, so um, it's not my not my um not my area of expertise. So I will. I think at this moment, Faro is walking out, and you know, I, I I'm I'm assuming just picturing that you all you're not standing in the doorway, but you're standing like. Mm you know, six feet out from Mm -hmm. the doorway, so everyone's, like, walking around you to exit room, Um, and Fado is exiting, and I do the sideways thing to get around you, Renee, Um, and I don't acknowledge you, but I just pause and look at Juniper and offer her a soft smile, and, and I just say, um... Oh, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. And I just... Are, you are going to the library tonight? Yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to meet, meet me tonight, I can show, show you what I what I found. Sure. No problem. 
and Fado, without, you know, asking for further details, just um, mm. nods and I'm walking down the hall to my next class. <laughs> That's fair. And Renee becomes one with his waistcoat as his just head shrinks in this whole conversation. Like, I was here. Okay. Such a sad boy. Is he bothering you, Junie? I think that Tom comes out of the classroom and sees this sort of the end of this awkward interaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that they have bonded with Juniper both because she reminds him of someone from their childhood and also just Tom also likes some of the books in the library. Um, I think that if Juniper had been the one to end up with that book, not like porn, like they read sometimes. Um, <laughs> if Juniper had been the one to end up with that book, Tom might have... Uh, stolen it from her before like <laughs> letting her read it but is everything all right here yeah 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 everything everything's fine um i just i was asking R renee for to help i came across something that I, I i wasn't unsure of and i wanted a second set of eyes i have eyes yeah, I mean, if you want to, I, 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 I have fully face palms. <laughs> I, 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 I kind of have to get to get to my my, my next my next class. Um, but uh, I'm gonna be free tonight. I'm gonna be studying in my normal spot in the library. If you, uh, if, if you want to come and if you want to help, um, and, and this is this is definitely like more awkward the normal behavior from juniper something is bothering her and she, she doesn't know how to like talk about it yeah i think that's that's when i come in mm -hmm. um the literal last straggler out of the classroom um hefting my bag mm -hmm. oh we're helping what are we helping what's up jenny also y'all are nerds um <laughs> uh caster just gets along with juni because caster gets along with everybody that's so <laughs> that's it <laughs> You okay? You don't. You look. You look a bit. It's been. It's been a. It's been. It's been a couple of days. Uh, I've been working really hard, and maybe I haven't been sleeping great. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I see, see. See you later. Um. I. I really, really, really have to get to going. Uh. And the. The. You know. They're gonna be like. But join me tonight. Normal spot in the library. Uh. And they. They turn off, and they're like, almost booking it out of the hallway um and uh yeah no, that's what the, that's what they do um <laughs> that was weird yeah. that was weird yeah they found something she she found something what do you mean she found something in a book caster okay it's a library. We all, we, all, we all find stuff in books. That's what books have. Information. Do you know what yes. you're looking into? No, it just seems a bit scared. I thought she was just busy. She could be a bit you know, frazzled on a good day, but I don't know. It just felt the, the, the energy was weird so are we all going then even you yes i, I look directly at fire <laughs> oh wait did you leave yeah um, I, I walked away i'm going to my next class <laughs> i didn't even know you yeah. were here i know it out of there <laughs> yeah i'm gone <laughs> oh fine. yes library date i mean i like the library i was going to go there anyways okay well, I'm not oh. doing anything tonight, so count me in. Judy's my friend too. Yes. And uh, Faro will be there. Oh, Willie. Yes, okay. is that a problem? No, no. Is it for you? No. Oh. We're roommates. We see each other all the time. Yep, you do. And how's that going? Uh, fine. It's going fine. Well, you know, we're here if you ever want to talk about it. 
Thank you. I'll see you later. I have to get to class. <sighs> Why is everyone in such a hurry to get to class? I go off to my own class. <laughs> Uh, why is everyone in a hurry to go to class goes to class <laughs> yeah I'm, 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 okay but like i'm like leisurely strolling you mm. know i'm not in a hurry yeah you're not you're not booking it or anything you're like I'm not i'll booking get to class it. when i get to class. when i get to class yeah <laughs> we'll yeah. get there when we get there <laughs> we get there when we get there <laughs> mm-hmm. well i let's see So I stare at my notes and my brain does not tell me what my meat, my, my brain, I see my notes and what I need to do. And my brain is like, that's not what you need to do. And I'm like, yes, that's great. Right. Be like that. Yeah, no. Um. So the rest of your day passes pretty without an incident. I imagine there's some things that people want to do during the day as well between classes. Uh, My own personal agendas that you all want to push forward. No, <laughs> I think I've got a couple uh, on nothing. Yeah, I think that Renee is like I'm gonna think about all the other stuff uh, when I'm not thinking mm. about class. Um, I think I think for a brief moment we follow follow as you know they're walking from class to class and um. There are these, I believe they're lamps, right, Aubrey, outside, yes. lighting the, the pathways? The, yeah, um, all of the pathways or everything are lit by lamps that have magical energy. Uh, the sun itself is, it, it, so, it comes and sets, but it's, it's in a state of solar eclipse. So it's kind of that weird, like, orangish, like, purplish light and doesn't do much to actually illuminate, whereas over the last 100 years or so, they have developed these lamps that are powered by magic, um, usually lit most days by the lamplighters themselves. But yeah, what happens as you pass them? Yeah, so I think part of the reason Fado was in such a hurry to leave is that we watch as Fado is seemingly taking like the longest routes possible to get to class. I'm avoiding all of these major walkways. Um, and I think we see Fado come out into a courtyard where there is a single lamp next to a stone fountain. And um, I'm sticking to the walls of this like cloister-like area, um, walking very, very quickly. Um, I think Faro takes one glance up at the sun in its seemingly endless, uh, and, and the endless darkness cast upon, uh, this realm. And in that brief moment that Faro almost paused their movement, the lamp in the center of this courtyard goes out and the light flies towards Faro and it goes right into my chest and we see Faro's skin begin to glow this beautiful golden orange casting light my freckles begin to glow my eyes begin to glow I have golden veins um, throughout my hands and arms Um, this is what I looked like just a few months ago but just as quickly as it came the light fades uh, once more and um the the in in the now darkness um or dimmer light of this courtyard we see just a bit of shadows wisping out of Faro's hair and um Faro curses under his breath, um, looking at that light, and shakes their head and quickly keeps walking. Yes. So, you do, and I guess now is, I'm going to ask, which one of you is likely to take divination as a class? 
Probably Renee. Okay. Is it like an elective? Kind of? It's not one of those ones that is required, but I guess it would definitely be considered an elective. It's, it is one of those kinds of magic that is, they're like, alchemy is a very untested science. Divination is even more untested. They're like, they can predict things. They sometimes come true. Other times they're <laughs> weird and just be like, yeah, these horrible things are going to happen and horrible things are happening. And then they go, see, look, we said horrible things were going to happen. Renee's on the doom train, so yeah. I think Fado would take that class um, because I think I'm very eager to learn about every kind of magic, especially given uh, I don't really have a background in, in magic, or at least my family didn't, prior to me somehow having this gift. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think I'm taking like all the classes. So if I'm not taking it this semester, I've probably taken it before, um, just to just to try it, you know, take all the hundred level classes while I can, right? <laughs> You're like, let's try all the magic. Yeah, I think I quickly found alchemy to be what I wanted because that's that's what my magic was best suited for. But yeah. you know, <laughs> oh. we'll find yeah. ourselves in the divination classroom. It is this sort of circular room where candles and silks hang. The candles themselves just sort of float around the classroom providing ambiance, uh, you know. And everyone today is learning how to do a harrow reading. Uh, and harrow works specifically at, whereas there's three rows of cards, three each. Uh, the first top row is the past, the middle row is the present, and the bottom row is the future. And so you are put together uh, with a group, uh, you know, sort of as a group read this, do this harrow reading and interpret it to what it might mean. And so Renee, uh, Faro, and whoever else is in this class, so is, is this something that Tom is likely to, to you know, do? The idea of a divination class is sort of diametrically opposed to their worldview. That's I think. fair. Um, so it'll just be Renee and Faro over these cards. And do you. I imagine there's almost like a clinicalness to how you do this. Renee is really bad at this class. Um, <laughs> I think it involves letting go too much. Um, and I imagine um, divination to be something that re relies more on your ability to intuit the situation and the cards and their meaning. And um, I think he has been bullheadedly trying to, it's like trying to apply math to English, um, yeah, where that. he wants it to just mean what it means and has not really given over to the more like loose, intuitive side of divination. Okay. I think Faro is pretty good at this. I think um, the way that their mind works is very open-ended and, and uh, interested in trying to find these deeper meanings in cards that are just a display of graphics, pictures, illustrations, paintings sometimes with words, sometimes not. Um, and uh, I think this is the first time we've had this class in a while, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all throughout the class, Fado offers up interpretations. Um, I feel like most of the time that I offer uh, words it's kind of like the oh you know i never thought of that one before M maybe it's right maybe it's wrong maybe it fits the vibes maybe it doesn't but um 
I, I, I'm, I'm creative. It's, it's, it's that one meme where it's yeah. like, everybody's so creative. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's Vado's uh, suggestions. Um, because I think, I think the very first day of class, I imagine this professor was just like, there is no such thing as a wrong answer. We're all looking to define the truth within ourselves <laughs> or Very whatever. Much. I don't that's, know who this that's, professor that's, that's, the, the professor's name is Professor Lascar. Uh, and yeah, the, you toss a bit of maybe a Russian accent on top of that. And yeah, that's very much exactly how they You don't want to hear me attempt Russian. That's fine. There was another stream uh, where I did that. It was bad. Do, um, do we but... not? Do we not? <laughs> no, you don't want to hear me do it. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so it's that, but Russian. <laughs> yeah. And I have actually done a Harrow reading that we Ooh. will interpret. <gasps> yeah. yeah. So as the, we're going to start with the top row. Uh, and yes, the Harrow is Pathfinder and stuff because, you know, this is fun. I'm mixing things. We're having fun. Uh, the first card, the furthest on the left card that you flip over is the Empty Throne. It is a card you see this person kneeling with their hands over their face in front of this obelisk. The empty throne itself is just looking at this card gives you a sense of loss. And then the next one you flip over is the dance. It is this person in this beautifully colored robes spinning about using magic to perform and then the last one you pick flip over in the past is the crows misaligned that is upside down and let's see gonna make you make a um let's do a brains roll and i won't set a dc like what you get is kind of like the higher you get you'll get more because we're playing think, fast and loose with rules i think like i got a 13 just oh wait mm. that's yeah that's i rolled relatively well yeah but i feel like renee's very stubborn. It's almost an unwillingness to understand this course, which is funny because you chose to take it. Yeah. Um, but I think that his interpretation of it, like he understands very clinically the um, the meaning of the cards as written. It's like I still don't understand the crows. Are the crows dancing on the throne? Like, what does that? What is that supposed to mean? This doesn't mean anything. I think it. It's. Even with the success, uh, I mm. think that he yeah. doesn't. No, that makes sense. Uh, Fado is looking at them. Um, I think Renee recognizes seeing him deep in thought. I think their brow furrows and they kind of squint and tilt their head a little bit. Um, my glasses back on. Because Fado needs his glasses. Uh, it's just looking at these cards and um, then says, uh, I don't know. I think it is sadness, empty feeling, bad, bad, bad omen. I don't know what the dance is for. That's my question. Maybe someone is happy that it's empty. Well, maybe it's a sign that, I don't know, I'm supposed to be sitting in another room where someone's dancing. I don't know. That's, I don't think that's it. We still have two more rows to flip over. This is symbolizing the past. Um, and so you flip over the, the second row, and it is the first one is the vision. It is a person, you see a finger pointing down at this person, 
and they've got their hands up to their face in horror. Uh, quite often is to do with arcane knowledge, uh, learning things that you can't take back. Uh, in the middle is the mute hag, this sort of crone looking creature. Uh, she doesn't have eyes, but lodged in her mouth is an eye and she is holding up four fingers. And the final one you flip over is the eclipse. And it's simple. It is an eclipse. I think in a truly dramatic turn of events, um, Renee sees the first card. Mm -hmm. um, or he sees the, the vision, which was the second card? I don't remember. First. The vision is first. first card. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he sees the vision, looks at Faro, grabs his bag and walks out of the room. Also, if anybody wants to see it, I posted the link to it in uh, the chat. You can copy and paste it, and it will show you the full reading. Whoa. Amazing. Um, because I, I think he is fully overcome by how much, like, the meaning of that card, the literal meaning of it is a little bit too real right now, and he gets up and walks away. Wait, where did you post it? Um, it is in chat. You should be able to copy and paste it because uh, it doesn't make it a hyper. I don't for see some it. Reason. Oh, wait, no, I, I only posted it to one person. I just always said to one person. Everyone in the meeting. Boom. Boom. Did you post Aha! it to the one person or <laughs> someone who's not in this class? That's so funny. That's very that's funny. That's who I always that last is, That is hilarious. On. That is very funny. Um, I, I, My link doesn't work, though, for some reason. That's not opening. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Try it again. I love. I'll also drop it. There. Ah, there. Ah. Please, please go. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, the I think especially given the visual of it, it makes it even worse. And like um he goes paler even than normal <laughs> and just leaves. I think Faro feels this very unsettling feeling coming over his body. And seeing Rene get up and leave, Faro watches, watches him uh, walk out of the room. And um, was it just the two of us in a group or was there other people in our group? I think it was just the two of you. Break off into pairs, do a hero mm. reading. Um, but I think before Renee left, he just very quietly muttered, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't respond. Uh, and after you leave, I kind of look up for the professor. And yes, this sort of elven woman goes over to you and goes, Yes, how can I... Is everything all right? May I be excused? Looks at your cards, especially looks at your cards and frowns slightly and just looks up at you and goes, Yes, yes, yes that is fine. I'll see you in the next class. Um, And before I leave, I quickly turn over the last three cards mm -hmm. just to look at them. And you see the, the locksmith uh, the second card is the survivor reversed, and then the demon lantern. Uh, and I make notes of those, just kind of look down at it, look back up at the professor, and say, um, thank you. I will see you next class. 
and then like it's a little awkward but photo just nods and takes one last look at the middle row looking at the mm -hmm. eclipse looking at the mute hag looking at the vision i take my bag and i also walk out on these two extremely sad gays <laughs> i think now is a great time for us to take our 10 minute break uh, come back for your final class of the day and then to go to the library see what's up with Juniper. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back in 10 minutes. Everybody, uh, get up, stretch your legs, grab something to drink, grab something to eat, take your meds if you need them, and we'll see everybody in 10 minutes or so. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody had a nice break, got to you got a chance to stretch your legs, got something to eat, got something to drink, uh, and we're going to be rolling back into the final class of the day, which is necromancy. Uh, and this one is taught, uh, you know, in, in this sort of large open classroom, it is probably actually one of the more packed classes. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people who really want to learn about what it means because there's a lot going on with necromancy in the world itself. Uh, so there is a, there's a lot of people just want to be prepared. Um, so it's, I imagine it's very much that classic, like lecture hall, you know, with the seating that goes up and in the, in the front, you have your teacher, um, Professor Atencio. Um, they are literally your classic, rather foppish, like vampire you would see in like, I don't know, they've got like big Lestat energy. <laughs> Um, you know, they're, they're kind of like doing the thing. They're like just sitting on the desk, uh, you know, as they're watching everybody, uh, you know, move in, uh, imagine, uh, Pastor and, uh, Tom, you're both on time. Oh, maybe Caster's not. Tom is. I was, I mean, I, well, okay, here's the thing is I wasn't in a hurry to get to mm -hmm. my classes, but I think that I am pretty punctual despite that. You're, you're like, the, you walk in like, um, like right before the bell rings, essentially, yeah. you kind of, kind of vibe that I'm feeling. Exactly prompt. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're incredibly prompt. It's to a point where it's like, are you doing this on creepy. purpose? <laughs> Just cast her just standing outside the stupid door like this, looking at a watch. Okay, now. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, yeah, you all notice that uh, at this moment, neither Renee or Faro are here. Uh, as the uh, professor starts up and, you know, they do, they stand up. They're known to be a little theatrical. Uh, they enjoy that part. Uh, and they go... Well, today we're going to talk about probably the subject I am most uh, qualified to talk about. We're going to discuss vampirism, vampires, and all that comes with it. Let's see, you. And is going to point to heads or tails? Tails. Uh, yeah, and we'll point to you, Caster, and just be like, tell me, what do you know about vampirism? Pointy teeth. Yes, it's a good start. And they, Blood sucking? Quite often, not all vampires do that, but uh, definitely, um, I am definitely of the kind. Uh, it is, it's always fun trying to get, uh, never mind, this, this is a story for a later time. <laughs> I, I should not be telling, talking about this with students. I'm a professor. I'm pro professional. Oh. Yes. Vampirism. <laughs> uh, vampirism, quite often, uh, a lot of people do think it's wrong. It's, you know, the whole, you know, you are killed by a vampire and you become a vampire. Not always what happens. Uh, sometimes it is you are born. Um, you know, I quite happen to be one of the ones that's born because my mother shocked up with some vampire lord. It was interesting. It, very interesting growing up life. Uh, some, you know, and should you be telling, should he be telling us this? I mean, I'm willing to listen. Mm. 
Yes, there's um I'm relatively sure that she's still there. Last I checked, the hunter still had her contained in her house. But there was actually a vampire there was a vampire lady, I guess would be the proper term for her. Um is in the city of Malakad for a very long time. Uh she was magically contained to her house because she caused too many problems. Her name was Nyx. Um Thus, I heard she's still contained to her house because she keeps killing the hunters who go in. Moving on. I mean, it was <laughs> her house. <laughs> yes, that, that is very fair. Uh, she, she, yes, 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 as I was saying, um, vampires, uh, born, turned, the very... very very many different kinds, very many different ways to become a vampire. I wonder what would happen if... No, 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 I'm not going to go down that route. Um, also many ways to kill a vampire. Usually just murder. <laughs> sorry! I'm so sorry. That took me out. That's yes, usually, uh, if you... Vampires stake through the heart generally does it, but also if you just hurt them like you would most anybody else until they stop moving, they're generally dead. Going through it, hold on. <laughs> uh, I will take some questions from the class. Uh, you said some vampires don't drink blood. Does that depend on how they're sort of turned or born? Yes, yes, it, it, it can. Uh, there's some th things people like to call emotional vampires, so more than just people who are needy. Um, and uh, it, they feed off the positive emotions or negative emotions, depends kind of what the vampire likes. Um, you know, there are ones that feed on well, there's emotions, blood, um, heard something occasionally there's light there's one I heard recently uh, I've not seen it for myself so I would but in a world where light has become a resource that kind of makes sense so like um I, I'm so sorry. Can I just pause for two seconds? Mm -hmm. I need to get back into character. I'm so off You're right good. now. You're good. It was, it's been... Can can Fado walk in right after this question is asked? Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, let me make it the most awkward question then. I... Um, okay. Um... Okay, yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, do light vampires just, like, eat light, then? That would be the idea, generally, yes. I have not gotten to study this phenomenon myself. It seems to be relatively new. Um, but one would think that they would eat light. Uh, I'm not sure if it's to do with magic, or um, if... They're trying to thirst for actual sunlight. Uh, the other part is uh, a little bit in high demand these days. Um, the door opens, and Faro walks in late. Um, Hearing I just go down the side aisle all the way to like the back of the room. And I sit down in, like, I think one of the last open seats in, like, the second to last row or whatever. <laughs> I sit down and quickly take my notes out. Um, I'm trying not to draw any attention to myself. Uh, I'm usually not late, either. Yes. Um, let's see. I want to make you roll something for that. Oh boy. To just Go slip ahead. in quietly. Uh, let's... Let's do a flight roll to slip in quietly. Flight? Yeah. Flight. Okay. And 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This doesn't seem to be incredibly hard because you, you know, it's a big lecture hall, you know. Do you, so let's set it at like a nine. <laughs> Two. Two. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah, that is also an adversity token for you. Uh, yeah. No, it is very obvious as the doors slam open as a uh, fire walks in carrying a cat and. Uh, makes their way to their seat. Oh yes, I am carrying my cat. Um, I think holding, I think it's just like on my shoulder and I'm kind of holding it with one hand and, you know, trying to be inconspicuous, but doesn't quite, doesn't quite uh, work. <laughs> the professor goes, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you could join us. Uh, we're discussing vampires and vampirism today. I'm sorry for my tardiness. I'm sure you will make it up later. Uh, it's fine. It's serious so questions. Vampires, vampirism. Anyone? Is it true that they can charm you? They can be quite charming, yes. Uh, uh, usually the ones that uh, have magical means, they could charm you magically, but uh, most of the others just rely on our natural charisma. Right. Well, um, yet again, uh, as I was saying, with vampires, uh, one of the big things that's been up in the we're uh, very unsure about ever since the never ending night started is most vampires do have an aversion to the sun quite often quite a few of them are harmed by the sun it really depends and with no sun anymore it, does it it's been interesting adapting to that life like i remember a little bit before the never-ending night, uh, whereas I grew up, I was a very small child around that time before everything happened, and I always had to stay indoors as I was growing up during the day, and because I inherited that sensitivity to light. It wasn't as bad as other vampires. It was, think of it like the worst sunburn you've ever had, but I luckily didn't burst into flames like other vampires. Would I you Fado... rather? Oh. oh, I was just gonna ask. Um, would you rather the night remain never ending then? It thinks about it for for a moment, just being like, I think I would feel much better about it never ending if I we knew exactly what was causing it and the consequences of it, things that we still don't understand. But I think maybe for the first time all day, mm -hmm. uh, raises his hand. Yes, yes. Uh, what is your question? Are there ways that you can become a vampire besides, you know, directly interacting with one, be it being bitten or cursed or what not? Yes, yes, we were talking a little bit about that earlier. Um, vampires, they can be born, they can be, like, I was born, my mother, uh, my mother married a vampire, and, you know, I was, uh, what happened because of it? Vampires born, bitten, cursed, as you said. I, it's possible through magical means quite possibly magic caused things like that there is probably some sort of necromancy or transmutation magic that could cause vampires a person to become a vampire it'd be very it's either a spell that went very very right or a spell that went very very wrong i see thank you <laughs> you're welcome um so um Yes, yes, we're, we're back to, back to, back to the lecture. Uh, 
vampires and they exist uh, and you know this this teacher continues going you know they're very verbose verbose they just keep talking and then half the time it's like a deviation to tell a story and then back on track five minutes later another deviation for like oh yeah remember i've heard this thing uh and then eventually the class will come to a close many of you probably the final class of your of the day and i think at this point we'll jump over to renee and what renee is doing after leaving divination class Mm -hmm. and i think there being an awkward two seconds of uh close proximity when uh faro came back to get his cat Mm -hmm. um Renee has gone back to his room uh, and just sets down his bag and inside of his room kind of radiating out from his desk is magic components and all kinds of instruments and books and notes that all just radiate out. They're on the bed they're on the dresser. There's drawers open on the dresser that also have like stuff hanging out of it. This is not a room for living in. This is, mm-hmm. it's a lab. It's a secondary lab. And um, he comes in and a white stoat is with his little nose nudging the last of the stuff off of the desk. Um, and kind of chirps and comes over and greets Renee as he sets down his bag and climbs over the careful foot spots that are left for him to walk in and out of the room. Sits at his desk, pats the stoat on his little head. Thank you. And just puts his head down on his desk and stays there for a very long time. That's fair. And I think forgets to get up and go to probably his favorite class of the day. Where everyone else is. Yeah. I I think in hindsight, you might be glad you didn't go to class today. Yeah. Because of the subject matter. Maybe somewhere Mm. in the back of your mind you remembered, oh yeah, we're talking about vampires today. Uh, no reason. Mm -hmm. Avoidance is not a thing that people do. Uh. (laughs) And yeah, after a very long not nap um, that might have involved uh, a little cry as a treat, um, he pulls some papers out from a drawer and spreads them out on his desk and begins to compare sets of notes. Um, uh, One of them is dated for months ago. um, And one has been being compiled for the last couple of weeks. That's all he does. I will say you all have time before you've agreed to meet Juniper. There's things to spend your afternoon, evening on before meeting Juniper, and I think some people have things they want to do. What would people like to do? Eat. Yes. And there's a there's a there's a mess mess hall. hall. Yeah. I that's where um I can be found not just like eating but like just socializing in general yeah. very social butterfly so yeah I think it's the fact that this this like the academy itself is in such a massive city but like even though there's maybe only a few hundred people per class like maybe 200 people per like class level the school feels packed at all times, you know, from faculty, people working there, and students. So it, it definitely, you know, you do not lack in people to socialize with. Uh, also, Castro knows everyone. Of course. 
like everyone. It's kind of weird. Is Tom spending their afternoon doing anything? I think that Tom just takes advantage of the free time to find some sort of like isolated tower somewhere that they can go up high and just sort of watch and be be above people. You could easily make your way up to the bell tower. You can see all the corpse moths that nest there. Yeah. And a corpse moth is uh, it's about cat sized or so moth that looks like a death's head moth. That's uh, they're um, kind of like pigeons. <laughs> 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 they're just everywhere. I think that Tom sort of spends time um, sketching in a notebook both like some buildings around campus and also just trying to like lure over a corpse moth to scratch its fuzzy little head. Not hard. There. You know, you sit still long enough, one of them will like eventually like hover over to where you are. You're much cuter than a de-gouled hunter. I bet they are. Uh and Faro, was there anything you wanted to do with your afternoon? Uh, I think after the necromancy class, um, Faro will head back to. I think I think I go back to my room, mm-hmm. and um, quietly slip inside. And I put my cat down, and Goose runs into my room, and I follow, and I close the door. Um, And I think I just pull out my homework and just start getting my work done like a very diligent student, someone who does my homework as soon as I get home from school. (laughs) (laughs) Unlike Jay in high school. (laughs) That's so fair, though. And eventually, the last of the afternoon slips away from you. The, the eclipse falls back below the horizon, and you can see the twin moons in the sky. And the city itself, especially, Tom, if you stay there, after the, the, the eclipse has set, you watch the city just completely light up. Um, with all of these magical lights and especially the where the the school is in relation to the rest of the city you can see a lot of it you can see the river that sort of bisects the city and splits it into the bridges that cross that and all of that it is a, it is a beautiful sight uh, off in the distance you can kind of see the the gaping darkness of the hollow haunts a, a district that is no longer there and who is the first to arrive in the library? Not me. <laughs> I think I think Fado would leave pretty early because I think I leave the room before dinner to mm-hmm. go get dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, like I eat by myself in like a dark corner of this mess hall. Mm-hmm. Um. And then I, you know, I'm eating really quickly. I don't think I sit with anyone. Um, I think Faro has a lot of friends, and I think my friends say hi to me as they walk in. And um, something about my posture, and you know, I think I brought my homework with me, so I have all my notes sprawled out across this table in the corner. And I think they can tell I don't want company, so they all say hi to me, and I say hi back. Um, They go sit together, um, and uh, I finish up dinner, and I think I head to the library pretty early, and I think my plan was to just go get some work done and wait for Juniper. Yeah. When you're in the mess hall, by the way, um, if you had looked up, you would have seen that caster was watching you out of the corner of his eye. Not in, like, a creepy way, just in a, like are they okay kind of way yeah and i think i catch eyes with you like i i catch your gaze for just a moment 
and um Fado like like kind of like looks at you over the rim of of his glasses and it's just kind of like looking at you with a bewildered expression kind of like why are you looking at me <laughs> it just kind of raises his eyebrows at you kind of like I think Fado just blinks and looks back down to their work. Um, He'll kind of chuckle to himself and turn back to the conversation he was having. I think Renee forgets the dinner exists. Fair. No! Um, Because the person (laughs) that would normally nag him is doing something else. Um... Something else is eating dinner. (laughs) (laughs) Correct. Um, (laughs) But um, does does the clock tower toll? Yeah. It would toll at some point. It would toll for the like end of the day kind of thing. It would do the, it's standard. It does three tones at the beginning of the day, three tones at the end. Um, When the three tones said, I imagine like a rational person would be like, and it's now time to go have dinner. And Renee thinks, oh yes, I should get up for dinner and then spends two hours doing something else. That's fair. Um, and then heads to the library, realizing how long that they've spent um, fussing around in their room um, mm-hmm. and like runs out urgently, but is probably around uh, early-ish, but probably not as early as Fado. So you do, and far, far as you enter uh, and look around, you've noticed that the librarian herself, she has left for the day. You know, it's kind of like a, you can um, still be in the library after hours, uh, but there's not going to be like a library or anything. So, you know, you kind of, you look around and you don't really see anybody in here there are uh sort of as i see the library there is it's two levels um there is sort of the base level and then the upper level and there are alcoves where people study um sort of small rooms off like if somebody wants privacy as they study and as you enter you don't really see anybody else in here looks like everybody is working on stuff or at dinner Mm -hmm. and i think i just sit down in you know, like in in plain view because other people were planning on meeting us here. Yes. Um, and so I'm not gonna like hide away in the corner. Um, I think I do like one walk around just to see, um, like in like the main areas, just a quick walk around to see if um, if Juniper has made it here. Um, and I'm assuming I don't see her. Um, and so you know. I don't know, just shrugs and finds a table kind of in like that first big room when you walk in mm-hmm. and I am just sitting there and I'm going to work until everybody else arrives. And yeah. I think we as the audience see that placed on the table in front of me next to my stuff is um, some extra food. Okay. <laughs> so gay. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing gay happening here. No, at all. none. <laughs> I think, um, almost like clockwork, you, uh, Fado, finish the thing you were first getting there to kind of do on your own. And you could almost like point to the door a second before Renee appears, fully disheveled. Um, uh, their waistcoat is still like undone and they're running in like they're late and they look around and just very eagerly come over because there's food on this table <laughs> and all day he's been so like quiet and cautious around you and then suddenly there is still this uh, young young person who is sometimes very um, food and need driven that uh, after a while, even though he's very dignified, when he forgets to take care of himself, he starts to get a little bit like, okay, but now I need, I have to fuel the brain in here. Um, And (laughs) comes over and slaps his bag down. Is it, 
can I just have a little of... I missed... Hi. I, I know. And I'd just slide it all over to you. Find anything new? New? What, what do you mean? Still looking over the notes. I can't figure out. I'm... I haven't figured out what the flaw was. Faro is staring straight ahead. I think you'll find it. Eventually. I'm going to try. But for now, I'm famished. And just starts eating very eagerly. Um... And there's, a, <laughs> as as you eat, I just turn back to my work. Um, I think the weight of what we learned in in necromancy is kind of like set setting in on my shoulders. Um, realizing how rare this condition is, and how it seems that even one of the best learned people on the subject doesn't seem to know a lot about what happened to me. Um, but I, I think, I think I finished my homework. Um, uh, and then I'm just, I think I get up, I pick just a random book off the shelf, something, some subject that I'm interested in. I bring it over and I just start reading once I'm done. Uh, and I think Faro at, at some point just says, what time did Juniper say she, she was going to come? Because I kind of left early. I had to leave early, get to class, you know. Um, she said after dinner, I don't quite remember the details. Um, that's why I ran. Uh. Do you... I, I mean, I've been here for quite, quite some time. Do you reckon she might be on the upper level? Because I think Fado only walked around the bottom level. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see the others yet, but they seem to know when. Do you think we missed them? Ah, uh, yeah, I think we should just stay here until they get here. That would be the best. Yeah. And I think that that's about the time that Tom comes in. Um, they had gotten a little distracted up on the tower and missed dinner, but I think he has little like hidden caches of snacks sort of across campus, just like trail mix. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes like in. Like a squirrel? Like, <laughs> <exactly>. <laughs> He comes in just like chomping on a kind of dusty like bag of like mixed nuts. Ew, dusty. Yeah. Why would you I describe it as dusty? Dusty. <laughs> dusty nuts. <laughs> dust these nuts. Hey. You did that to yourself. Yep. Comes in eating yeah. nuts. Yes. Um, um, I would have, I feel like I uh, could have met you on the way in as well. And so we walk in together and I have an apple that I am about to bite into. And then I see that Renee is like going to town on some food. And then I just kind of put the apple on the table in front of you. <laughs> Thank you. Did you missed it? Hi. Hello. Yeah. Is that dust? Oh, it's only I, on the I, outside I, I, of the bag. I didn't want to ask, to be honest. All it's right. fine, see? And sort of shows them to you, but like at a distance so you don't take any. <laughs> Not that I think you would. <laughs> and then the bag is covered picks, in dust. 
picks up the apple offered by Caster and just takes a like bite of a new piece of food. <laughs> a new piece of food. A not dusty piece of food. A not dusty piece of food. I will look at at uh, Tom though and kind of like hold my hand out like. with a shot where's Judy not here yet um, although I haven't checked the upper levels but the librarian left and told me I was the only one in here so I'm assuming she's not here yet which is weird I think yeah that is a bit odd um, I can go check really quick I'm fast I'm go, go, go jog upstairs look around Renee takes a long look as you jog away just like huh Was that a gay look? What are you what are you looking at? It was at a gay there? look. It was a gay look. I see. I see. <laughs> uh hate to see you go, but love to watch you leave. Uh yeah. <laughs> I do. I, I'm I'm assuming I don't find her up there. <laughs> or anyone. As you're just sort of you you making a steady jog. As you're doing this, you're not really paying attention. You don't see anybody, uh, but suddenly your foot slips on something. And give me a let's let's do either like let's uh, let's do a let's see. We're gonna do a grit check. Oh, oh we're gonna watch me eat shit. <laughs> uh, we're gonna uh, we're just gonna do a we'll do a six. I can't do it. <laughs> I, I have a D4 in grit. There's no way. If you roll a four, you get to roll yeah, again. I can, I can, I can. Okay, okay, but here's the thing. Oh, I did. Hey. Oh. I was I was all prepared and then I did okay. That's seven total. Seven total. So like yes. as you do, you feel your foot like start to slip a little bit. Uh, and you kind of like throw your arms up as I not, almost knock over my own ring light uh, <laughs> uh, to balance yourself and you know, kind of like skate a little bit. And do you turn around and see what you slipped on? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be like, oh, whoa. It is certainly red and it is certainly wet. And whoa. it smells very metallic. How much is there? Say a bit more than um, just somebody had a nosebleed. Guys, I think you should come up here. Okay. Now! Uh, and hearing that, Fo will just like close my books but leave my stuff on the table and I'll run as fast as I can. Yeah, I think Renee just brings the apple and nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I think that hearing of the panic, Tom goes a step further and there are around one of his wrists a sort of bracelet of woven like wisteria fronds and it sort of pulls off and reconfigures itself into the hilt of a knife and the air around um, sort of swirls into a blade. This hey, is that's my cool. wand. That's Hell yeah. So cool. that's, that's sick. Sick. <laughs> what if wand with knife? On brand. Good for Tom. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. Uh, and as, as you do this, um, and you move up, uh, Caster, you're just sort of continuing to, like, look. Yeah, I'm frozen. I'm, mm. I still have my arms out, bracing myself, mm -hmm. staring directly at it. Yeah, um, and it's, like, kind of, like, near one of the corners, like, off to your right is, like, this small area that, like, it's got a desk and things like that. Um, and you notice that the, the chair is on its is fallen over um you can't really see any there's nothing it seems to be on the table 
Uh, but the chair has fallen over, and behind where the chair is, one would think maybe where a person's head would be, uh, is this blood stain. And you all see this as you come upstairs. You're right. Is that... Uh, you, you know what? Why don't you tell me what you see, and I can we can see if I'm hallucinating. Are you bleeding? No, it's not me. Um, That's like a lot of blood, isn't it? Can I look around for like literally anything else that might be here besides the blood? Yeah, let's uh, let's do a brains roll. This one will be. I'm so good at that, you guys. Yeah, um, let's <laughs> let's. This is going to be at a twelve. May I also make this check? Yes, it will also be at a <laughs> 16. Fifteen. Ooh. Yeah. You both you both see and you're both looking and uh, you'll you will both notice different things. So Faro, you see what appears to be a school bag sort of shoved underneath this desk in a way that like was trying to like hide that it was seen um and then renee you look and the first thing you notice is a book like on the bookshelf but it's shoved it's different because it's spine backwards it's pages out and this, unlike the books, the rest around it looks to be hand-bound leather. Am I freaking out? Oh, should we call? Should we call someone? Renee does not respond and walks straight over to this strange book. What but are like, you doing? don't go near it. Crime scene. It's a library, and he That's... pulls the book off the shelf. <laughs> It is, it is this hand-bound leather tome. Uh, you know, it's got the uh, yay big wraps around with a leather cord uh, and embossed on the uh, on the um, the cover is what looks to be uh, a ram's head. This must have been what Juniper was talking about. Um, meanwhile, Faro will pull out the school bag. Is it Juniper's bag? Um, yes, it does appear to be Juniper's bag because uh, one, Juniper is very much the kind of person to write on the inside of her bag that Juniper. Uh, <laughs> and two, you do notice that it's got like her agenda in it, you know, it's got her planner in it. Doesn't have a lot else. Um, you don't see her wand, you don't see any of her like school books, you see like a planner, uh, and what appears to be like some snacks. And that's it. Um Faro kind of pulls everything out like slowly, like looking at it, um, and then they say, well, this, this is definitely, um, definitely her stuff. What, what's that? Look, and knowing that some magical items have power and being a little bit wary of trying new things at this moment, uh, Renee's going to bring it over and not open it. I can I look at it? Yeah. Is there anything? Um, do, do I feel any sinister magics? Uh, do I? <laughs> can I vibe check this thing. Vibe check. Um, yeah. Can I vibe check it? That'll be. Let's do uh, two vibe check something. Let's do a grit roll. Cool. That's a stat. Mm -hmm. It is a stat. Um, and we're sure we're, we're going to do a five. 
Okay. Oh. Surprisingly well. I got a 10. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, this book feels weird. Like, maybe there's magic in it. Maybe it's a book. But, like, you don't feel like this book is going to retaliate if you decide to open it. But there is definitely a weird feeling about this book. Okay. I am going to open it then. Um, and I think, like, I hold it, like, away from my body, like, arms fully outstretched to open it. <laughs> Renee's kind just of in case. peeking over your elbow just to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not tall enough <laughs> to look over your shoulder. I hide directly behind Tom. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious because I'm like 6'1". You are, yeah, significantly taller than Yeah. Me. As you open it, this book, it, it doesn't have a name on it or anything. Uh, as you open it and it appears to be notes of some kind, uh, you see these magical circles drawn in it, like drawing, my brain immediately jumped to sacred geometry, say, something like that. It is, it is these equations. It is things that to somebody don't make a lot of sense. Um, and as you flip through it, there's more, there are more of these equations. There are more of strange shorthand notes that um, are in sort of this very small, scratchy handwriting. Recognize the handwriting? Probably not, uh, but uh, give me a brains roll. See if you recognize it. This is gonna be a 19. I tried it, that's a 17. You um, feel like you've yeah. seen this handwriting before? You have adversity tokens? Uh, I do. No, I don't think it's gonna get better than that. I. Listen, I know how numbers work. Um, <laughs> it's more, I was wondering if it was Juniper or like a it professor. It is not Juniper. Yeah. I think the writing, I, I feel like Juniper reads to me as someone who also has very neat handwriting. But the kind of like bubble letters kind of handwriting, like <laughs> oh, it's yeah. wider. <laughs> Absolutely. Not, 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 not like bubble letters, but very rounded letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Renee yeah, has yeah, like yeah. perfect cursive. Yes. With the little hearts on the eyes, like that, that, that vibe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or draws a circle for the dots for the eyes. That, that vibe of handwriting. <laughs> um, I think there, as, as I sort of flip through the pages, um, there's a flash of recognition across Faro's eyes. And if any of the three of you are watching my face, I don't think, I don't think I do a very good job of hiding it. It's subtle, but it's there. I am not paying attention to Faro, but for a reason. Valid. <laughs> I love this for you. Go on. <laughs> are you busy eating your nuts in the corner? What's going on? Your dusty nuts? Your dusty nuts. <laughs> Is there a way to attempt to contact Juniper, like a message spell, something of that oh, nature. Yeah, I would say there, there is a message spell. Um, and it, that'll be like a, a brains, probably a brains magic roll. Yeah, That's that makes right. sense. Um, I, it's, a, it's, it's a pretty simple spell. Uh, you know, it's probably one you learn pretty early. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna make it like a five for your, uh, for your success. That's a nine. A nine? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we see Tom sort of lean down towards the blood spatter and touch the edge of the sort of wind dagger into it. So now there's just like a red T 
tip floating in the middle of the air, basically, mm. and bring it up to his mouth and whisper into it. Truni, are you are you okay? You get a feeling that the message is delivered, but the person is unable to respond. She left you on red. Oh, no. Rough. Not that. Well, now we know she's in trouble because obviously no one would do that willingly. <laughs> <laughs> no one leaves me on red. <laughs> <laughs> she must be in danger. She would never ignore my calls. Um, yeah. I think Caster, when, especially when you leave, he's just kind of like, I really think we should call someone. Like, I understand that we're very in investigative mode and that's very inspiring. However, I'm sure there's someone else we could call who would be able to take care of this clear murder or kidnapping or something, whatever's happening here. Not Am I the either. only sane one? <laughs> My message delivered, she just couldn't respond, but... Baro, you were here earlier, did you? And there was no one else? I think Faro has put his glasses back on and is flipping through the book again, um, like looking more closely at, um, at these symbols. Again, like the... Their eyes are squinted, eyebrows furrowed, um, and mouth slightly agape as I am looking through all of these scratch notes whatsoever. Um, and then when you speak, uh, he's almost like jolted out of this concentration and says, What? Um, uh, yeah, when I arrived to the library, there was like only a few others, but they left when the librarian left. I was the only one here for quite some time. No one else noticed the big growing pile of blood on the floor. Downstairs. I was downstairs. I didn't go upstairs. <sighs> okay, well, what's in the book? You got this weird look on your face when you opened it. Um, and I turn the book around to show you. It's someone's notes. Alchemy. Okay. Does the book have a, have a name in it, or...? Mm. So why, why, why was it no. turned outward? So, so that you can look at it? In the oh. shelf. That's what I'm saying, is it's supposed to be important. Okay, you know what, I'm not a detective, so... <laughs> You're right, we should contact someone. Yes, thank you! I believe so. But also we should who see what this book is about. I don't know. The, the, the Headmaster Ravenswood. Headmaster, or the librarian or, or someone. A janitor. I imagine we might need one eventually. I think Faro's gaze just looks down at the blood and back up at <laughs> the three of you. <laughs> If you're you have... telling a professor, I don't want to be involved in that. I mean, you just happen to find a pile of blood in the middle of a room where no one else was, um, that no one else noticed. Caster wouldn't. I'm sorry? W wouldn't, yeah, why? No one would think that. Yeah, no one, only people who have things to hide think like that. I think... A little too quickly, Fano says. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> Caster's face goes from um, goes from Tom to to you, and then like just glances at Renee, like, 
you two or Renee just shrugs. Oh, okay. Why do I get involved in this? Okay. Well, I have nothing to hide. So how about I go tell someone and you all do whatever it was you were doing. Um, what's the alchemy? What what were they trying to make? Uh, looking at the alchemy, what was this person trying to do? <laughs> what are the notes on? <laughs> For you, this would be a relatively easy check. So just to see how much you get from what it is. Give me another brains yeah. roll. I'll gladly uh, roll my d20 again. Yeah, no, roll, roll it. <laughs> right, right, right. Can I add my bonus for being good at alchemy to this? <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Yay. Oh, uh, that is math. 15. 15. Math. You see a person who's... This book also seems old. Like, the pages are all yellowed and worn. Um, this seems to be... You see formulas for elixirs that strengthen people. You see formulas for elixirs that transform people. And along with the elixirs to transform, you see these almost uh, dissecting drawings of people with these arms that have become weapons. You see notes on you see notes on a lot of about uh, there's some stuff about various monsters and creatures that have existed because of the never ending night there is notes on how to take monster blood and turn it into a reagent for alchemy Specifically, blood of the monsters that come from a different plane and the effects that it has on a person. They're not pretty. Um, I think as I'm flipping through this book, uh, I point out, um, point out these things, um, and the whole time, Fado's voice is soft and sounding a little bit confused. Um, because above the table, Fado knows to who this book belongs to. <laughs> um, and is sort of trying to process that. Silently. Do you think it's a, a hunter's book? Like one of the hunters came through and left it? Quite odd to leave it tur turned out, you said? It, it was. The, um, the spine was facing inward, um, which uh, something that obfuscates the book, it makes, draws so much more attention to it. Um... Do you think Juniper had anything to do with it? This is... Could this be what she found? Because well there's nothing else here. At least, uh, and I'm looking sort of at the blood and kind of at everyone else. I, I mean, I don't know if, if her bag was shoved under the desk as if to try to hide it. So perhaps if she knew that she might have been been in danger or something. Is there anything else in the bag? And I think that Tom will pick it up and go through it maybe more carefully than Faro did. Yeah, and Faro uh, just offhandedly this might be the funniest thing Faro has said all day. Faro just says uh, there's snacks in there, but not for you. Did 
do I find anything more incriminating than non-dusty snacks? <laughs> um, you see the, uh, there are like various like writing implements in there. Um, you would all know that Juniper would keep like all of her books in her bag. The fact that they are not there is definitely something that would stand out to you. The only thing that is her agenda, which was kind of like shoved in like a sort of like a pocket in the bag, the snacks and the writing implements. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'll skim through the agenda, see if she made any notes in there, either to us or just like going to talk to you X about this creepy book I found. Um, you see for the uh, for the last couple of days, she has some notes uh, about uh, there's one note that is says talked to Prescott at bookseller. Uh, you know, question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, you know, she said she would get some books for me. Um, and then Graham was going to procure a reagent. Both were on different days, and it does not, it, they were in the last week or so. Well, that's something, I suppose, and showing the pages to the rest of the group. Maybe. Graham. Going... Sorry, uh, uh, Graham was going to procure a what? Reagent. 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 What does that word mean? Uh, an ingredient for um, a uh, like a potion or a spell. It, it doesn't specify what it could be for, like you know, a special kind of uh, you know plant or something for uh, a potion, or it could be a you know a spell component. Oh. Yeah. Reagent. You were saying ingredient. Ingredient, yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I'm looking at the, the the captions, and it's it was saying a different word, and I was like, "What does that mean?" <laughs> okay, never mind. You can cut that out. <laughs> <sighs> I will. I I would have. I would like to mention that I would have left as soon as I said I was going to. Yeah. Because I I feel like I just I I don't know if I ever specified that I I left. I, I have imagined. We'll, we'll cool. get to you. In Thanks. Just cool, cool, cool. a second, and what you Thanks. what you learn. Uh, do do any of us know who Graham is? Uh you you'll know that uh, Elric Graham is the owner of the the Mysterium. Uh, the. Uh, the Elric's Mystical Mysterium, which is a, you know, like a magic supply shop. Uh, and Very familiar. More likely than not, the other one is uh, the, the owner of the Twilight Bookseller. Uh, they're both uh, two things that you've probably spent a lot of time in in this district. And a lot of money. That too. <sighs> She was clearly working on something. Something from this? Some sort of holy blood alchemy? It's strange. Is that something that Juniper was interested in? I wish I'd have known. You don't ever remember Juniper talking about like specifically this. Juniper had taken alchemy before, but you know, specifically this, this is left field. It doesn't strike me as something that she would be interested in herself, perhaps. This is it this isn't her handwriting either are you all right i'm fine don't worry about me it's 
So, Caster, where are you headed? Uh, on it. Oh, so I'll probably head to like the headmaster's <laughs> office, but like it, literally the first person I see who um, preferably is a faculty member, I'm going to flag <laughs> down. Yeah. Principal, principal, we found Something blood in the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, um, you're making your way up the stairs because the headmaster lives near the, like, the top. You know, like, his office is near the top. And uh, you're, are you, are you, are you running? Are you power walking? How are you moving? Are you? Um, to be honest with you, I want to go fast. So I think I'm actually riding my broom. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this is allowed, but it doesn't matter. I'm breaking the rules. Um, I, this seems like a time I, to break the rules. This seems like the time to break the rules. It just seems like an emergency. I don't know. You can't um, ride a broom inside the school. <laughs> bite me. <laughs> um, I will. <laughs> oh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I have, I, I have, um, my uh pen my pen that i i play with but i don't um mm -hmm. i don't usually write anything with um i i basically as soon as i get out of the doors of the library i uncap it put the cap on the back and then i twist it and it turns into my broom which is black and has silver like silvery like streaks through the wood and then mm -hmm. um the bristles are like a uh, white and silver um and I hop on it and I race off. Um, it's yeah. quite fast. Yeah, you um as as you do this, probably like you literally almost collide with Professor Tallis as you know he is exiting the the alchemy classroom. Uh and then she's just like, what is Oh my god, I'm so sorry. What is Are you okay? going on? Um uh, this this uh there was a lot in the library. There's a lot of bloods, and I think that Juniper, Juniper Novak, do you know her? She's, I think she's missing and possibly in a lot of danger. What do we do? You. And, and you know, there's this sort of these emotions, and you're like, where in the library is this? Please slow down, speak. A second, 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 second floor. floor. Okay. Um, and you, uh, he's just like, I will go get the headmaster, wait where, where it is, and we'll come to you. Okay, okay, okay. And I hop back on my broom and I go right back <laughs> to the <Yeah>. library. <laughs> okay, the headmaster's coming. I found Professor Tallis and they're coming, I think. What did we find right. out? Um, well, this isn't Juniper's book. It's not? No. Not her handwriting. Okay. Uh. <sighs> That's odd. Uh, is that, is that the thing that she was talking about then that she, that she found? That she wanted help extra eyes on? Yeah, it's peculiar, I would imagine... That's what she told me. And she, was, she asked Prescott, the bookseller, for a few other books as well. Maybe if we see what those are, we can get a better sense. What do you mean? We, what, what, do you, what do you mean? You want to pursue this? I just told you the headmaster's coming. <sighs> I'm interested in just seeing what she was pursuing. That's, that's, that's fair, I suppose. Okay, um, well, it might be a bit late to talk to Prescott now. Do you want to maybe do it tomorrow? I could do it tomorrow. Um, I think, I think Faro has um, sat down in one of the other chairs, not the bloodied one, another chair. Um, and I'm still flipping through this book, and I think, like, from my corner of wherever I'm sitting, Faro is looking at something in the back of this book. And I think ever since the, um, 
incident, I guess I'll call it. Um, a lot of the warmth from um, from his skin has faded. Um, their skin tone is a lot uh, cooler on the cooler side with cooler undertones now. Um, and they look just a bit paler than they used to be. Um, but as you look over at Faro, uh, Faro um, now, he looks even paler than normal. Um, and they look up and they look at you three and they say, well, whatever, whatever Chuni was investigating, it wasn't good. Look at this. And I'm turning the book around to show you three. Um, and uh, on this page is a fairly advanced, um, like advanced alchemy um, written in a shorthand that one would, um, like you, you basically have to know a lot about alchemy to be able to understand this shorthand. It's like, I don't even know. It's like the equivalent of writing like the elements on the periodic table by their like two letter thing instead of writing it out or whatever. Like you just have to know it. Um, and uh, when uh, I'm assuming there, there's not really a flash of recognition on anybody's faces. Uh, Fredo, um it's kind of like looking at you like, look at this. And when like nobody <laughs> sort of gets it, uh, they say, um, this, um, you remember class earlier today. Well, this, someone is doing research and creating a, um, I can't. What is it? How to turn someone into a ghoul. On purpose? How would anyone do that? I have absolutely no idea. But yes, this this appears to be... Um, and I turn the book back around, and, and I'm, now I'm looking through it again. And I run a finger down the page, and I say, It's a recipe. Uh instructions on how to make um something it, it appears the end product might be um not not a liquid not powder perhaps a gas and if you gas. ingest it turn you into well into a ghoul it's not very good oh that's bad that's really bad what are the components? And Tom takes out a notebook to copy down what Fodder says. I'll I'll talk to Graham tomorrow and I mean that can't I, I be don't... what Junie was working on. You don't know? You can't read it? No, I, I don't I don't know if we should just go around telling people about this. This is I mean, obviously I don't know if it would work, but that's 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 what it that's what it's for. That's uh, one ingredient in particular, a unique one. Is there something like that? Lovely GM, is there one iconic ingredient that <laughs> one might need to complete this horrid task? <laughs> yes. Yes, there is. There is, you You notice there is a... There is something that is very hard to get your hands on for this. It is... It is a particular venom that comes from a chimera that is, well, it's chimera venom. It is very hard to get your hands on and it's not exactly like one of those things that you can just go to the alchemy store and buy. Um, you, usually somebody would need it, they would get in contact with a hunter who would be able to get it for them or uh, someone who worked at a uh, a story because the the venom itself is stored in like a because they've got the scorpion tail um on part and discovered that uh it also makes a very good thing to 
create an aerosol solution because of the way it breaks down certain things. I'm not saying that Juniper was trying to make this particular recipe, but we know she was in contact with Graham. We know that she was looking for a reagent. I can go tomorrow and say I'm picking it up for her, asking about the status of it. And if it's something else, then that's great. Um, yeah, and I think, I think Faro this whole time was sort of like looking at the ingredients, like, cause again, like in shorthand, what have you, trying to process it all. And, uh, Faro will, uh, say, um, uh, pretty much exactly what we said. And I can read the captions. This is something that's very hard to get your hands on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I can say what you said. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I say that. Um, you do. And uh, then Faro just says, it's concerning. I, I wouldn't want to, you know, draw attention to us if we are going around asking about these things. That I actually agree with. I have a concern. What's this your book concern? was here in this library. Well, it's not she a found it in... book. Yes, but someone... There's more than one person who knows about this in this school. Not to be paranoid, but... The... Books just don't appear. People don't just find things. Someone put My them there. best assumption is that... The thing... That Junie found and was so antsy to tell us about was probably the book. It's my guess, anyway. Yes. Shuni doesn't seem like the type of person who would want to pursue this. But I imagine if, you know, she had picked up the book at some point and realized what it was, she'd be scared. That's I'm saying scary. someone put it in here. For I her, think it for her to was, find it for us to find. No, someone is keeping a book full of very dangerous knowledge in this school. Oh, you meant here as in general. You're not here specifically in the library. I see. Um, um that's alarming. Uh it is about this time you hear the sound of the doors to the library open. Uh, and several pairs of boots moving, and this is kind of the "what do you choose to do?" moment. Oh God, panic! <laughs> in his in his fit of paranoia, Renee has palmed from a holster tucked along his very well tailored trousers mm-hmm. um, a uh, shockingly mundane looking wand uh, that is knotted and gnarled. Um, and relatively small. Um, and he's just holding it very tightly, like white knuckling his very fair skin over it. Um, and his like black, very well manicured nails are kind of like digging into his hand a little bit. Um, I, I'm just going to roll evens or odds real quick. Don't mind. I love this game. I love love this game. Love it. Love it. Love it. I think as soon as as soon as Faro hears the footsteps, he's gonna shove that book back on the shelf, and I'm gonna stand in front of it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, right side, right side in. Yeah, well, I'm just, I'm just yeah, I'm just putting it back on the shelf and standing in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as as you do that, there is up coming from the stairs. You see the headmaster, Andreas Ravenswood, uh, in sort of his weird sort of, el- his, his sort of ethereal elven glory, you know, he's he's very old and very strange. Uh, and you see behind <laughs> him, you see uh, Professor Talis, and you see a couple of the other professors as well. Uh, they come up and they just, like, see you, they see the blood stain, uh, and, uh, and, you know, they just, like, look, just being like, 
um, Professor Talis approaches you and just, just, t- just tell us what happened. Tell us what you found. Well, I was in the library since pretty much midway through dinner and there was nobody in here and we were waiting for our friend and we waited for quite some time she never showed up and we decided to go upstairs and just look for her and we found all this blood and her bag so she was here at some point Okay, um, and it looks at everybody else and just being like, please, I ask that you all head back to your dorms. We will figure out what is going on here and what might have happened to your friend. Any of them seem not shocked. Um, give me a brains roll for can that. I also, may I also? Now I'm, now I'm paranoid. <laughs> Paranoia. That's a Paranoia. thirteen. Hold on, I don't remember what my brains. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ta-da. That's a five. I got nothing. A five, uh, Caster. You're you're still just kind of freaked out about everything. Um, and, and Renee, you're you're unsure if is it do, are they not acting surprised or are they just trying to like push it down because they're the adults and they need to be the ones that are like in charge and you know you're all freaked out and they don't want to freak you out more Renee will remember this (laughs) (laughs) um I think Faro is just looking between all of the people's faces, the headmaster, Professor Talos, um, and who, whoever else arrived, guards or security or yeah, whatnot. There's a couple of the other professors, yeah. Um, it was like a faculty meeting and some of them came. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, think, I, I think I'm just standing there like slack-jawed, um, frozen in place, partially because I'm trying to stand in front of this book um, and also partially just in shock. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I will come over um, and kind of start, I'll, I'll just like tug on Faro's um, wrist. Um, as I do, though, I'm coming around and I'm going to palm the book. Okay. Uh, let's, let's do a... Uh... A charm roll feels applicable. A charm, okay. Uh, it feels applicable. Uh, you know. Can I can I help if I know what caster caster's trying to do? Yeah, I would say like if caster makes it obvious enough, that is what they're trying to do. Um, you know, let's, let's do a charm roll. Uh, this is there's a lot going on right now, so this is just going to be at like a ten. A ten, okay. Uh, just because it's like... What does help give me? Is it plus one or... Uh, yeah, sure, I'll say it's a, it's a plus one. Plus one? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think how I help, while you roll, I think how I help is you come up next to me and you grab onto my wrist and um, I think I... As I turn around, I think I turn towards... Um, like, if you're pulling me this way, I turn mm-hmm. towards the bookcase and turn my back towards everyone and I see you reaching for the book and so instead of just going with you automatically I stand I linger for like an extra second (laughs) you try to grab this thing cool um I rolled a seven but I am going to use two adversity tokens to make it a nine uh, just, I'm I also mean, allow. Two, sorry, three, three, three. three. three cool. I was like, do you only? Have... I'm sorry, I, I forgot. I forgot how math works. <laughs> You're good. Math, math is hard. We're all gay. <laughs> Make We're it a nine. Gay. That doesn't sound right. Um, Ten, yes. Yeah, <laughs> with these with these adversity tokens and Faro's help, you're able to just sort of pull that book and like carry it down low enough that you know, as you turn, you can just slide it into a bag or something uh, yeah. as you're ushered out of. The library. Uh, yeah, I will. Yeah, 
a kind yeah. of like just kind of be like, come on, let's go. Um, and I think and we go out. downstairs. <laughs> We collect our stuff, yes, mm -hmm. and then we leave. I think Renee collects his stuff relatively slowly and kind of makes a show of dealing with the food in particular and really like taking his time to listen for what's going on before oh. leaving. Yeah, you you hear a bunch of very quiet, muffled conversation from above. Um, let's do a. I was like, let's do a flight roll. All right. To see how well you listen in. Uh, that's six. Six. You pick out Juniper's name a bunch, um, but not much beyond that. They are speaking very, very quietly, and you know, there. Um, you watch as like a couple of the teachers are sort of staring, at the standing by, like the where the stairs are. Um, this starts to really frustrate Renee, who always puts on this air of being so together. And the more he can hear them whispering, the more aggressively he starts to put away his stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, he finishes and huffs out. Everybody else. Do. When mm -hmm. Faro and Caster leave, as soon as we're like far enough away, um, I just pull you into like a corner, like where the wall would like dip in just so quickly. And I. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> um, oh, not like that. Uh, I know, and... I know, I know. <laughs> I was just joking. I'm sorry. And I kiss you. No. Uh, <laughs> and I. Um, I take my own bag and I just like open it. I think I have like a satchel or something mm -hmm. and I just open it and I say, if, may I study it? Yeah, no, I mean, I don't have any use for it. Like rubbish and alchemy and I will give it to you. Um, but as I'm passing it over, I will just kind of like hold your gaze for a second. I'll be like, I don't know why you don't want to trust the adults with this but I'm trusting you, okay? I know. Okay. Thank thank you. Yeah, no problem. It's fine. Um we should oh talk tomorrow, probably. Yeah. Uh, I I'm gonna pour over this tonight, see if I see anything else concerning that's only one page the amount of time it took for me to decipher that yes. who knows what else is in here well be safe be careful I will at this point behind you in a huff Renee's just like storming down the hallway <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I pop out of that sort of like inset wall mm -hmm. and I also start walking, although I don't turn around to acknowledge you, but we're both walking in the same direction because we share a room. <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. Are there external windows on the <laughs> second floor of the library? Oh, God bless. Yes, there are. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's Every go. group needs a miscreant, right? This is how this works. <laughs> So I think that Tom slipped out like really fast as soon as the professor showed up, like not before, like they mm. saw his face, but he left immediately when they told him to and then uh, got out the broom and got up to a window and attempted to cast some sort of like stealthifying spell on his little pipe fox and gently nudged it through the window. Mm -hmm. You send your pipe fox in to sneak around. <laughs> yes, because we can communicate with familiars, correct? Or Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I send it in mm -hmm. to attempt to listen. Well, give me a... Uh, we'll do a, a grit roll from you as well to see how well you're 
familiar familiar does great uh, you sure that's not like charm having some situational awareness sure i'll love charm <laughs> thank you we'll do a charm okay so that's a five five what was the um, dc <laughs> uh, I uh, would it have it's higher. Uh, it would be, I would say, it would be at like an eight or a nine. Do you have enough adversity tokens for that? I've got five adversity tokens, so I'll spend them. No, no. Uh, so up to an eight. So I spend three or up to a nine. Uh, it was, we'll go with nine. So you'll spend the four. four. Um, okay. And you do that, and it's just. You're hearing a bit about, you're hearing more than Renee was able to hear earlier, but still not completely, just to be safe and not have your familiar be seen. Um, you, the one thing you do you pick up is the headmaster saying in hushed tones to Professor Talis, what did you do? And then there's a lot about, uh, there's, there's not a lot else that you can pick up. I think, I mean, just that is spicy enough to call back the pipe fox mm -hmm. and attempt to uh, reconvene with the rest of the group. Paranoid now. Here. I think only Caster uh is still in the har hallway um, yeah Faro has left Faro knows too much and i am running away <laughs> yeah. I, I gave up i gave up my book so mm -hmm. i'm i'm just i'm chilling i am waiting for you though because I'm, I'm like uh we all need to go <laughs> yeah there were uh too many adults standing around and whispering and keeping secrets in front of a rich kid um and he had to leave <laughs> <laughs> nobody keeps secrets from me basically <laughs> Um, yeah, and he, he's just stormed off. He's gone. He's going straight, fastest route possible. He has it memorized to their rooms. And actually, what's really interesting is that I think it's very clear I'm also going back to the room, but I veer off. Yeah. The long route. The long yeah, route. The long route. Makes sense. Um, Caster is, um, like has like leaning against the wall with like one foot up but in his arms is his is his fox and he's just giving her scritches behind the ears because he's a little freaked out right now i actually yeah. think as faro veers off renee stops looks and sees that they have veered off and begins to follow faro instead ah, yes! <laughs> spicy! um as you follow me, um, I think I take, you know, like a very long, I think at some point you're wondering if I'm actually going back to our room or not. Like it's, it's so long winded that, that you're like, what the heck? Like, you know, he must be up to something. Um, it's, it's, it's like, basically if we had Google maps and we are going the exact opposite of everything that Google maps was telling us to go, that's what it feels like. Um, but I think as you're following me, it's a similar scene to earlier. You watch as one of these lanterns, perhaps a wall sconce this time. As I walk past it, the light seems to be consumed within my body. And it goes out just as quickly. And I keep walking. Seems that, uh, yeah, it's Tom and Castor come back together. I think it's Tom is almost pleased that the other two aren't here. He storms over to Castor and says, you want to know why I didn't want to involve the professors? Um, yes, that would be very enlightening, I imagine. Talus is involved somehow, and the headmaster knew. The headmaster asked Talus, what did you do? Talus? But he's... I, uh, I'm sorry, what are, what are Talus's pronouns? Hold on. 
They them, I think. Is it they? I have the document. No, uh, oh, no, he, he, him. Him. He's him. He's him. He him. him. I was right. He him. Um, Necromancy was they them. Okay. Yes. yes, yes. Yes, I caught that earlier and I was like, oh, shoot. Um, oh, but he's so nice. I mean, he's an alchemist. It makes sense. I suppose. Do you think it's his book? I don't know who here, who else here it would be. I mean, the headmaster certainly seems to think it is, maybe. Wait, that makes sense, actually. Um, is it, is it, is it, um, Talos, isn't Talos your mentor? Am I remembering that right? Yes, Talos is my mentor, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. And above okay. table, well, that is, is why I recognize yeah. the book. Is that, mm. um, is that uh, common knowledge? Is it like a TA kind of thing, or is it like... Not quite TA. So I think Faro is um, in alchemy class uh, prior to this incident. Uh, Faro, you know, was one of the best students uh, in that class, and I think the professor, I think for other students, they would notice that uh, Professor Tellis took um, special interest in Faro because I also had a really huge interest in the subject. Um, the magic that I uh, seem to be gifted with. Um, specifically dealt with light and healing. And so a large part of my studies, a lot of it independent study, was me learning healing magic. Um, and Talos was the one who was teaching me. Um, I basically would show up to office hours and get additional instruction. And I regularly was completing additional projects, some stuff like prof on the professional level for Talos' own research. Um, uh, that's he'd give right, me assignments. that's right. Because you, yeah. there was a you had finished a project as well and given yeah. it to him earlier, and I had clocked that. So I think yes. I think that I think that um, Caster is smart. So yes, to, you would to, know to yeah. reason this. Yeah, um, yeah. I think that Caster goes. That's why they were so focused on the book. Tells his book. No, 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 Faro. That's why oh. they wanted the book. He's her mentor. Do you think he's going to do something with it? Give it back? No, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think so. But I, I, I don't know. I feel like this is something we should really talk about. <sighs> do you know where the room is? I don't think I would. <laughs> I don't think I would. No, Caster's more like interested in people outside of like mm. private, so like more in public spaces, I think. That makes sense. Um, they're he's very observant though. He's very he's very observant and very clever. So I think that there he he might be like, I know that in this wing. I know that they're what what house are you? <laughs> well, I'm Crow. I'm Crow. magpie. Oh, so you're yeah. two different ones. Okay. Well, I imagine it's probably. I also yeah, I don't think we the don't dorms are separated by house. Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah, I think we don't invite people over very often. Super valid. Super valid. Yeah, I don't um, think we invite people over partially because I think both of us live in our own unique system of messiness, yes. uh, and oh, we don't so valid. <laughs> like inviting people to our collective mess. Uh, so I we, wouldn't know. I wouldn't know exactly. I think I would know the direction. Yeah. Um, we're That's taking such a long damn time to get back, or I'm taking such a long damn time getting back. I don't know that Renee is following me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. If you go the normal route, there's a chance you could see us turning there? into. I think it'd be funny if you catch us turning into the dorm wing, uh, having walked the normal route, and you see Faro just turning into the, the entire, the one big hallway that leads to all the dorms. Mm -hmm. And then like, I don't know what, like a hundred feet behind me, Renee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do. We yeah. could do that. We could do that. Cause I'd be like, I, I know it's this way. And then kind of 
go in that direction and then just coincidentally we all well we don't have to meet up necessarily if you guys don't know that we're i think it's yeah. funny if caster follows renee who's following me <laughs> <laughs> it's just a trail back to the dorm uh and are you are you all trying to meet faro back at the dorm i think that's the idea yeah that's the plan uh so we will see how that plays out next time as we come ah. to the end of our first episode wow the mysteries wow. Of uh thank you all for coming on this journey with us this is the first episode there will be three more and i'm very excited to see what happens with the players so i'm going to let my lovely cast tell you about themselves uh, and where you can find them on the internet. Uh, and we'll start with uh, you, Jazz. Me? Oh, yes. cool. What up? My name's Jazz, also known as Cinder Scoria on Twitter. That's usually where you can uh, find me hanging out. Although, I mean, I feel like I need to really be more present on there. I'll make an effort. Um, if you want to catch me in streams, I also stream on Elixia um, on Zeal Zaddy's channel on Tuesdays. We play uh, a homebrewed D&D 5e uh, campaign. Um, and then you can also find me on Other Setter Studios for the Arcane Core. Uh, it's a Monster of the Week campaign that is uh, coming into its third season, should be coming soon um but if you want to catch up on the first two uh, i play mo jackson and she's a mom which is the exact opposite of the character i'm playing today <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and then we'll go with kai next hey hello i'm kai uh you can find me on all social media platforms as estelle of Imladris. um i play in quite a wide variety of things uh currently to this recording anyways uh i am currently in uh, a ongoing one ring second edition game over on happy jacks rpg called unsung tales and we have a wonderful time wandering around middle earth and telling fun beautiful stories about that world uh and then i am a producer and uh player in the lore brewery which is a podcast uh that i am in currently we are doing a 5e fairy tale game called uh far far away where we uh take fairy tales that are familiar and kind of turn them on their head as we wander through a beautiful world full of fey and mystery and some very dark stuff because these are real old school fairy tales. <laughs> um, and for all of the other stuff up to date, uh, please come find me on Twitter or you can find me on uh, at estellaimladris.card.co. Uh, you should also check out The Party on uh, YouTube. I was the costume designer for a web series called The Party about people who play tabletop games together and it's a very fun time. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, now, Jay. Hi everyone, my name is Jay or Nala. I use the them pronouns. I am on the internet at Nala Wu on Twitter and at Nala Draws. Uh, if you'd like to see my artwork, I am also Nala Draws everywhere else that I want you to find me. Um, that includes TikTok and other places uh, like, I don't know, all the Twitter clones that are coming out now. Um, I'm on Blue Sky <laughs> as Nala Draws, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am a uh, professional uh, the art director and illustrator working full-time in TTRPGs. Um, I'm the art director for All the Witches and uh, some other cool projects. Uh, if you want to see my art, that's on nulladraws.com. And th that that's pr pretty much that's pretty much me. If you like what you see and you want to see me in another stream, um, you should come watch Itaewon by Night. Uh, we are the first and only all Asian cast playing Vampire the Masquerade on stream. As of this airing, we are currently streaming on Bathouse RPG on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, um, Jay from the past does not know what is happening in the uh, in season two right now. Um, future Jay will know, um, obviously, because I play in the game. Uh, but if you um, 
uh, have never heard of it or are interested, uh, season one is completely available on YouTube right now. You should check it out. Um, that, if you search Ito One by Night, it should come up. It's on Going Crit RPG's channel. Um, and yeah, for season two, we are on twitch.tv slash badhouse RPG. Um, uh yeah the the did i mention the uh award nominated uh show we do on by night <laughs> uh but yeah that's 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 where you can find me um thank you so much for having me and thank you for letting faro keep some secrets <laughs> just a few. some Although secrets you keep a few just a few you just know a few. uh and Alyssa. Hi y'all, I'm Alyssa. You can find me on Twitter at A Disaster Queer. Uh, you can also find me on the podcast An Unwavering Force, which is a Star Wars Pathfinder 2E actual play, as well as on uh, Opry's Goblets and Gaze, another Pathfinder 2E podcast. In terms of streaming, I am on Wednesdays playing a 5e homebrew campaign at the Mandy's channel called Mist Lost. And... It's probably wrapped up by now, but you can always catch the VODs of the Apocalypse Q series. I am GMing on TTRPG. That's me. Okay. Uh, and then, hello, I am Aubrey. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Magnum Cosplay. And as Lisa said, I am GM over on Goblets and Gaze. Pathfinder, goodness, check it out. Also, if you still like if you like Pathfinder and you're not tired of it yet, uh, you can check me out on uh, the upcoming, an upcoming Gatewalkers podcast um that will be has been announced and will have started airing and the links will be in below i suddenly can't remember what the show is called wow i'm professional um and yeah you check that out um also sometime this month i don't know if it has started yet but it has been announced that i will be over on vancouver by night playing in a vampire the masquerade chronicle playing uh an edgy lasombra uh, you also catch me doing a, a million things over here in queen's court games being the technical director and working on a million things and anything else you can just find links to at my twitter uh and yeah that'll be it and we'll say good night for now and join us next week for the spooky things that are gonna happen Thank you.